Hey guys, Greg Fraser here again with Jingsheng Kuo Shu. I've got my assistant here, Eric, working with me. Today we're going to work through uh, what people call the lightning locks or Z locks. These are ones that a lot of people say the lightning, it gives you a zigzag effect throughout the arm. All right. So if I'm starting here, these are typically from a common thing. Say Eric's trying to stop me from going somewhere. He's palming me off of this person. Okay. So the first one we're going to do is a cross hand grip. I'm going to go from this position. I'm getting in. I'm going to get the outside meat of the hand. You're not grabbing onto the wrist. You're grabbing up to the baby finger on the meat of that area of the hand. If you want anywhere from the middle of the hand to the outside knuckle, you don't want to lose leverage by going around too far to the outside. So you get a hold of that hand and you're going to twist your body and shoulder to bring them into control. Okay. To create this lock, rather than just going for an arm bar and going for stuff here, what I'm going to do is as soon as I turn this, as long as his fingers are pointed up and slightly forward or back stopped against me, I'm going to get this effect working really quite well. Doesn't matter whether I grab on top or I hook it from underneath. As I'm doing this, I'm going to roll his elbow in and down as I turn and face my center line to his shoulder. I'm going here. I'm doing this very lightly right now because as I start to bow towards him, he's going down. There's a lot of fillers we can put into this. Okay. But right now I'm just talking about this single technique. So he's coming in on me. He's grabbing. If I want, there's the strike, rotate, rotate back in. And if I just keep this in, a couple of things that can make this really tight, squeezing the hand against the chest. Okay. And Eric will tell you right now he's feeling it. Okay. I can then control him, take him into whatever techniques I want from that. Okay. So once again, striking, filling, okay. Twisting to get that control, rolling in and down or rolling in and down. These give me different options. I could take this from here, tuck this head through, go for face locks and so on from here if I wanted to. Second technique that we're asked about is the same side. So it's coming in here. I'm now taking the back side, back stop in the back of his hand and grabbing around the thumb side of his, of this hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my wrist, my body back here. If I'm doing this, there's a couple of three basic ones. If I hook under and I rotate, I can pass his hand back and I can either take him down to the inside, which will stack him, or I can pivot, take him around downward. All right. So this one, I'll do it from this side so you see it. He's got me hold. All right, let me go same side. This one here. So as I'm going through here, I'm taking it off. All right. I'm taking him down, boom, and I'm going under this fashion. All right. You can grab here. I can go under this fashion. Rotate, catch, and I've got all these different locks I can do if I need to come along or whatever. Third one you're going to look at here. Same principle. He's grabbing hold. I'm pushing that head, driving him away. While I'm doing that, I'm taking that peel and opening up that wrist. This is a trick. I don't want to come with my forearm or sort of the, the upper half of my arm over top of his forearm because when I get in here, I can get hung up or if I even get onto his leg and he out strengthens me right there, I can break an elbow. So when you're doing this, it's very important that as I'm going through, okay, and I'm coming back, I'm looking for just under the armpit at the top of your tricep. Okay. I'm coming down to the wrist, hooking back under and then going for either throat up here, locking his face. If I wanted to come along or I can bring him down and do a really bad take down right here. If I went to the ground with this, he'd have a sublux shoulder. Okay. Be careful if you guys are training this one. This one I love. He comes in, it's dry in and I can walk him up any which way. If I wanted to come along, I turn under the ear, okay? And I can lock this in this way. And he's pretty much gonna come along. If I need to squeeze down, how's it feel? Not good. Not good. <laughs> All right, one more time. Let's grab here. A little tricky. To the face, dot the eye, okay? Cross the teeth if you, the teeth if you need to. Drive that distraction. As I've got that, I'm stretching him out in that moment armpit to his wrist, dipping down, coming up under, there's the throat. I can go across here. I can grab 
and squeeze this in. It'll tell you that's a wrist break at the same time. I could take this down. There's knees, all kinds of stuff I can fill in with. Third one right here is where we're coming in and I'm gonna turn them into a choke. I just wanna get a quick control. So as I'm doing this, I can use what we call a garden style or an underhook type position here. The idea of this is to bring his elbow up and rotate him. So as he's coming in here, if I'm using the garden style here, okay, I'm pulling up above his shoulder, going in, and depending on what you're doing, I like how he's protecting his throat right here, okay? Uh, he's got a nice throat. Yeah, the problem is now I can turn this to the side, there's not sport fighting, and I can still get a really bad neck crank right in there. Okay? So he's in, I like that, <laughs> okay? He's got this, I can come underneath as well. I can turn this way and lift that elbow up, rotate him, come over and get it in, all right? Difference with self-defense and sports stuff is when we're doing the sports stuff, we have to get in, you know, lift them up, and we have to stay in sleeper or rear naked. If you're doing a street version, you need to protect yourself. If you just did a half turn, and this is now in this angle, you now are doing a neck crank, okay? This is where it gets dangerous, and if I get on top of that shoulder and press those shoulders down, or I use a compression with this, you can cause a lot of damage. So this is strictly self-defense stuff right there. Okay, so a quick review. First one came in, brought it over. I could drive the strike. I could hook over, depending on the strength. If you're not really strong, just capturing just onto the elbow or just past that elbow and bring it down to your ribs is a really powerful technique. You got knees, you got elbows, anything from there. If I'm doing it as a quick thing, he comes in, I can get him down real quick, so sorry. Okay? And then I can turn him out into whatever I want from here. All right? So when it comes in, we went in. I like that drive through, come into the arm, pot hook, and wrap him out, take him down. Again, here, we can go underneath, pull, lift, and go for chokes from behind here. Okay, deal with that hand that's in there after we take them down, just take them to the ground. All right, and the last one we were doing, we did, uh, so if I overturn, so I'll turn around this way a bit. So if he's grabbing me, maybe pushing me, stopping me back here, and I overturn, this overturn allows me to come in and catch this from underneath, okay? Once I've got this, I can either step back, take it across the front of him to his leg, shoulder damage, or I can be a little nicer, take him around me and to the ground. All right, so those are four basic Z locks that you can do. Two additional ones that you'll see are somebody getting a hold of me, grabbing. So if he's grabbing my arms or anything like this, we've got these. These Z locks work very effectively as well here. The idea, trap that hand, come over top, squeeze that down, there's that knee, okay? Here's those elbows going from there. Because of this side, right? Grab on. So it gets all the wrist, same thing. Over, bring it back in, air down, knees, whatever, whatever, boom, okay? One other one is, he's grabbing cross hand. Same idea, I'm going to the outside on this one. Creating a spook out position. So it's this tucking position, coming over right here, all right? And then I just point towards his shoulder and where I want him to go. Okay, right here. So on that pole position, over top, I need to still redirect. So if I'm going here, he's gonna roll out on it. So what I wanna do is get that sort of snake, come in, repoint, and then take him down. There it is, there it is. Okay. As fillers, if you guys aren't really training, I mean, you're gonna have to practice this one to get it very effective. But if I'm ever in these type of things, I go into these locks, okay? Great. Three really great techniques you can add as fillers that you don't need a lot of skills on are what we call bat wings. These are your rolling elbows here. Boom, drive. Move their head, drive through. Turn their face, drive through, or double hem, okay? That's one way. If I get here, I can also go from here and come out with these double hammer fists, okay? These work very effectively. And the third one is, we go in here, is just staying this in, and what we call a rhino, I just drop behind. I'm not hitting backwards. This one I'm gonna be very careful of because he'll feel it as I go in 
you feel that increased lock on your on your twist joint. So these are a couple add-ons, couple fillers that you could try. Check them out and let us know what you got. Let's start. With